Good morning. Welcome to Open Source Software Summit. So if we, today what I'd like to do is start a conversation about the history of open source software in China and Hong Kong, because I'm sure many of you have been part of that history and know more than I do. So together, I would like to create that history. If you look at the worldwide distribution of people on GitHub, you can see that this region is very strong. There are a lot of accounts in this region of the world. As a matter of fact, China has the second largest number of developers on GitHub by country. So that's individuals who signed up who have an account on GitHub with public repos. And Hong Kong is the fastest growing community. It's growing by 50%. That means this was 2022 numbers, but the 2023 numbers are the same, and the 2024 numbers are looking good. Um, this means for every two maintainers here in the room, every two people that there are with an open source account on GitHub, there'll be one more of you sitting in the seat next to you next year. That is phenomenal growth. And it's not just at the individual level. If we take a look at the enterprises, the companies and enterprises and businesses in China are also supporting open source software. If we look at the foundations that support open source software, like the Linux Foundation, the Apache Foundation, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and we look at their memberships, who is helping to support them, you can see that Chinese companies are well represented. they are over 10% of the platinum sponsorships in all of these foundations. That means there is a lot of support at the business level for all of the activities of the individuals. And I do realize from the previous speaker, there's always a balance of upstream and enterprise work, but I believe this shows an intention to support the projects. And many of the numbers that I have and that I'm showing you are from GitHub, but Giti is also super popular in China. I don't think this means there's twice as many developers, uh, but I do think that it means that there's twice as much open source software out there. There's twice as many repos. Um, so I think it's probably the same developers on both platforms, um, but that there's more software out there. So when I was thinking about the history of open source software in this area, I thought I've been to Hong Kong before, so sorry about the very big picture of me. Um, but I was here in 2004, and in 2004, I worked for Hewlett Packard, and we were in Hong Kong talking to some of the largest banks, and we were talking to them about open source software and Linux, because in 2004, they were using Linux clusters, I believe they were PA risk Linux clusters, to provide services for their customers. That was 20 years ago. So there has been a lot of groundbreaking work here in this area. So that's my history, you know, my beginning of open source software in Hong Kong and China. Um, I want each of you to think, if you're from here, when is the first time you got involved in open source software? If you're not from here, when is the first time you interacted with a maintainer from China? So think just for a minute. Maybe you can figure out what year it was. I had a nice picture with a date on it to tell me. Got your moment? So now I would like you to turn to the person next to you, introduce yourself, and find out when did they first get started in open source software in China. Maybe it was today. Maybe it was 20 years ago. Please introduce yourselves and find out. Talk to the person next to you. You have to find out from somebody. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
All right. So tell me what you learned. T tell me what you learned. How many people here, back up here, <laughs> I, lo I love the energy. I love the conversations. To me, this is why I go to open source software conferences, is to meet the other people. Because we work online all the time, and it's fun to meet the people. So tell me, who here met somebody or is somebody who got involved with open source software this year? Who's new to open source software? Awesome, we have some new people. If someone near you raised their hand, please say hi to them later. Please welcome them. How many people got involved since uh, 2015? A couple of people in the last, last five years. How many people since 2010? A few more hands. We must have people who've been here a long time. How many people since 20, 2005, 2004, when I came? Who, who's been here since 2004? Awesome, a few hands. Anybody since 2000? How about 1999? Does anybody, I'm not, I'm not kidding. There are people here who, who were involved with open source software since 1999. Yeah, <laughs> what, what have you got for me? In, in 93? Yep. 93, 1993. Round of applause. So I put together this timeline. I think it's probably missing a lot of things, so I welcome contributions. But I wanted to point out that the oldest, that the biggest event that happened earliest, did I say that right, is 1999, China put out Red Flag Linux. So in 1999, China was already releasing its own dis Linux distribution. Then I think China went on to make a really wise decision, a really wise decision to bring open source software into the industry. They started investing in open source software in the universities. First, they started promoting Scilab in universities. Then they started trying to use the MIT open courseware in their universities. And eventually, China went on to create their own open source software courseware. The reason I think this is a really wise decision is because when you educate students, when you teach them how to collaborate and work together, students learn that. They learn that way of working, and they take it onto their jobs, and they take it onto their industry, and they teach the rest of the world. So teaching students and involving them is critical. Then we went on to have some of our so first um, educational forums. Um, I put GNOME Asia here in 2008 because I personally got to attend that. Um, it was at a university. It was also my first experience with Lucky Draw. I went home and said, everybody loves Lucky Draw in China. Um, there, then we start to see some projects come out of China. And to be honest, I didn't know that all of these came out of China, but they're very well-known foundational projects. Um, there's even things like a gateway API used by Lyft. Um, there's this distributed databases. Um, there's op mobile operating systems. The Open Harmony project started. So these are all projects that originated from Chinese maintainers in China. We also start to see about that same time, about 2015, we start to see some of the first open source artificial intelligence projects coming out of, of China. About this, right after that, we start to see the government take a very big interest in making sure that open source software is successful. Um, we start to see them put out guidelines for using open source software. Uh, we see a lot of, a lot of uh, consortias and a lot of enterprises coming together to work on it. Um, and then 2020 happens. You all know 2020 was a very hard year for the entire world. One of the things that came out of this region, and in Hong Kong in particular, was a lot of open source software to try to understand and to manage the epidemic. Um, so Hong Kong had a piece of open source software um, that was used to track cell phones and figure out if you had been exposed to COVID um, and notify you. I tried really hard to get my local government to endorse it. Um, I thought it was very powerful because people were very afraid of being tracked and it was open source. And so you could see how it was tracking you and what it was sharing and who the data was shared with. Um, so I thought that was very, um, a very good use of open source software that came out of this area. 
And then we start to see that China takes the lead. Um, it's second in the world for a number of open source software developers all the way to today. So that's like 20 years of history very, very quickly. There's a lot of stuff that's not on there. I look forward to conversations with all of you on that. The same continues to be tr true in the generative AI space. Um, as Jim said, um, generative AI is extremely popular right now, very hot topic. I personally think it's going to change the world. Um, but you can see that, that Hong Kong and China are both in the top list of number of open source generative AI repos on GitHub. I wanted to point out this slide because I think it's really interesting that the more GitHub commits a country has, the more venture capital, more venture um, companies they have. So the more open source software activity that's happening in a country, the more business there is. And we see that in China. Um, these are all studies that have been published. They're on the web. At the end of my slides, there's a list of links if you would like to read them. They're very interesting. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of venture capital open source movement in China. There's a lot of startups using open source software in China. And there's a lot of enterprise support and adoption. These are just some of the top projects um, that are in China, that have started in China. Um, some of them were on the timeline. This is the list of open source software projects that I found on the agenda for this conference. So if you are interested in talking to a maintainer from China, if you would like to get involved, if you would like to meet them personally, all of these projects have talks here at the conference or they have booths down in the conference hall. So you can talk to the companies that are supporting open source software. You can talk to the maintainers. You can ask them how best to get involved. Where do I go talk to you online? Um, you can ask for help. So a show of hands, how many people here work on one of the work on a project that has a talk here at the conference? How many people work on a project that's represented here at the conference? So you see, look around you. Um, you can talk to those people. You can meet them. I'm curious, how many of you are a maintainer or have contributed to an open source software project? How many people have contributed? Awesome. So if you're new, look at those people that had their hands up and introduce yourself. So with that, I wanted to say we are a community. Uh, we are here. This is a special opportunity to be able to meet people in person, to talk, to learn each other's stories, to ask questions, to welcome new people. So please share your stories with me um, and enjoy the conference. We're a community together.